Good morning and welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. Here are your headlines. You're never too old to get rich, starting a business in midlife, and then the emotions of transitioning to retirement. Today's show is dedicated to those who are thinking about retirement. And joining me now is the author of Never Too Old to Be Rich, Carrie Hannon. She's an author, columnist, transition expert. Carrie, welcome to the program. Thank you. Great to be here, Jeff. Uh, it's great to have you on. So um, you recently, you're a accomplished author, uh, personal finance and transition e expert and an entrepreneur. What led you to write this book? Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this book, Never Too Old to Get Rich. And it really is a guide for midlife entrepreneurs kicking off a business. And for me, I spent a number of years traveling around the country, meeting people who had done really interesting career shifts um, at this age, you know, 40s and up, shifting into really starting something with, you know, there are several categories. I profiled 20 entrepreneurs, and the first group are people who start businesses from their passion or their hobby. And the second group were people who started businesses with someone younger, you know, senior junior partnerships. The third group were people who were social entrepreneurs who started small nonprofits and something that really would make an impact and have a legacy on, on you know, things that they really truly cared about, missions. And the last group are women entrepreneurs, which are the fastest group of entrepreneurs globally. It's truly a global movement. Yeah. And I would have, you know, when I looked at the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the, uh, it, the group, the co cohort that's age 65 and older, they are the fastest growing uh, group. Uh, seniors are the fastest growing group of uh, entrepreneurs, which is, I, th I find absolutely amazing. And let me ask you a question. Are we, and I think this is the thesis of some of your articles, but are we really redefining retirement here? I mean, retirement used to be sit on the rocking chair with the grandkids or, you know, play golf or something like that. But are we really redefining retirement here? Uh, you know, Jeff, I think absolutely. I mean, I always say, you know, we should retire the word retire because, you know, there's this new bonus chapter in life. We have longevity, not everyone, but I mean, there's this, this sense that, you know, you no longer at 60, you can start something that you might do for another 15 years easily. And so the possibilities are there. What do we want to do? And there are lots of reasons. It doesn't necessarily mean launching your own business. It can be working part-time or just, you know, working on a seasonal business, but people tend to want to stay engaged. They want to have a purpose, have a reason for getting up in the morning. And so I think we are changing what, what lies ahead in this next chapter of life. Yeah. And, and to your point, I mean, people want to be involved. I think, you know, we self a lot of us, myself included in the past, really self identify with our work. And, you know, almost it's, it's almost like a disconnect when you leave the work. But you can, you know, I think the point of getting to retirement, just my personal opinion, is that it gives you the, you know, hopefully you've been able to achieve the financial freedom to pursue what you really love. To your point, if you want to work for a nonprofit or establish a nonprofit or go greet people at Walmart or do something, you know, something that really is up to you. And I think you, you've you earned that at this point. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. This is your time. I mean, yes, there are a lot of people, even people who have saved adequately for retirement, uh, want to continue working as a financial safety net to a certain degree. But that's also there. there's this reward you get from doing work and contributing to the world around you and giving back. So there's a lot of good reasons. I always say work is not a four letter word. You know, it really is something that that it, it, it brings something to us and we give something back with it. Are there you know, the people that you've talked to in, when writing this book, are there challenges um, that you've kind of identified unique themes or themes across the interviewees where, you know, there were some challenges along the way in terms of starting a business or kind of getting getting moving forward into this new world? Yeah, that's a great question, Jeff. 
clearly there is, you know, there are some similar things that that all of them had. And I would say that for most entrepreneurs at this age, and, and maybe at any age, is money is the biggest stumbling block. So, you know, debt is truly a dream killer. So I always tell everyone, you absolutely have to make sure you are financially fit before you decide to launch a business, because you may not be able to pay yourself for the first year as you put money back into your business. And you might, most small businesses are self-financed. So, you know, self-funded. And so you need to be sure you have those savings socked away so that you can do comfortably because that, you know, they all said to me, I wish I had started with more because even if it's a nonprofit, it becomes fundraising, fundraising, fundraising. Yeah. I, I think one of the things I took away from uh, the book is, um, you know, people who started their own business said, I wish I had started earlier. And I, and I know you started your own business um, and you've been very successful, but is that, that's just a common thought, you know, people don't want to take the plunge, don't want to take the step. It, it is, as someone who is an entrepreneur now, it is a little bit daunting to step out there on your own, um, you know, to, into the unknown. No, without question. I mean, you have to be psychologically prepared for it. But you often it is something, you know, I tell everyone, no rash moves, you know, go slow. The successful entrepreneurs that I profile all took their time. They maybe started these businesses as a side gig while they were working on their primary career. They they reached out to their networks and did, did their homework. They did their research to say, why me? Why now? Why this product? Why this service? You know, you need to be sure there is a market for what it is you want to do. Not just some, some dream of something you'd love to do, but can you really make money doing this? Or is it going to be, you know, more vanity projects? So you need to do your research. If you can add the skills ahead of time, you might need a new certification. I'm not talking about master's degree or anything, but add what the skills and certifications you might need to do that. And again, as, as I mentioned before, if you can go out and volunteer and do the job first, then you get a sense of what it's all about, just really what you want to do and how you want to be spending your time. But the most important piece, again, is you need to be financially fit. Yeah. And I love the fact, uh, just to kind of close it out I, of this segment, I love the fact that we're, you know, people don't have to just check out at retirement. Because I think that was the case, you know, when I was coming up through the ranks, um, when you thought at age 65, it's just like, okay, check out. But I love the fact that people can continue to, to contribute. And I think that brings more vitality. And I actually think that helps people live longer, uh, which is ultimately, my opinion, the goal. I want to live as long as I can to be able to contribute and learn as much as I can and have those experiences. Yeah, you have to embrace it because truthfully, it keeps us mentally and physically sharper, as well as hopefully give a little boost to our finances as well. But when I say never too old to get rich, it's also the richness. I surely want everyone to be financially successful, but it's also the richness of doing work you love with people you love and in fields and doing something that makes an impact in the world. That's an inner richness that you absolutely cannot put a price tag on. Well, Carrie, can you stick around? We're going to go to commercial break, but would you be would you be able to stick stick around for another uh, segment? We can talk about your recent New York Times column. I would love to, Jeff. Thank you. Okay. And when we come back, Carrie's going to stick around, and we're going to talk about the emotions of transitioning to retirement. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 
33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. Carrie Hannon is still with us. And now we're going to transition away from starting your own business in retirement, being that entrepreneur, to now transitioning to retirement. What are those emotions? Carrie, thanks so much for sticking around. Um, appreciate you spending some more time with us. Delighted to be here, Jeff. Thank you. So uh, you recently wrote a piece in the New York Times, and I should point out that you are a columnist there. You write regular pieces and for other um, news periodicals as well. And it's called The Emotional Shift of Retirement. And I found this really amazing because a lot of people just look at the quantitative, right? They look at how much money do you have and how much can you draw down, right? But they don't think about the impact of what emotionally of what retirement means to you. Without question, we spent so many years thinking about I'm saving for this retirement and it's all about the financial planning when truth of it is it is a truly seismic emotional shift to go from a working life, a working identity to not working and not having that support system around you. So it's a very big shift that most of us are pretty unprepared for. Yeah, I, I, you know, have watched people kind of transition into retirement and you know, we were talking in the previous segment about how you can be an entrepreneur, how you can continue work. A lot of people don't really find those, don't really think in advance of what those plans are going to be. And maybe that should be part, you know, we, we always talk about the, as I said, the quantitative part about how much you need, but maybe the financial planners and the, the people who are working with folks that are pre-retirees can start in advance and say, you know, what are your passions? What do you love to do? Do you love to play music? Do you love to be an artist? It sounds like there's some work that needs to be done there. Oh, I love that, Jeff. That's exactly what needs to happen. You need to start planning. You know, I like to tell people at 60, start thinking about you want, what you want to do at 65 or at 55, at 60. It takes time to like create some white space and let the creativity come out. But how do you want to fill this next chapter of your life? So, so it's equally as engaging and meaningful, um, but in a different path. And it doesn't have to be starting your own business. Not everyone is hardwired to do that. But there's all kinds of great ways that we can start preparing because, as you mentioned, it is truly, you know, you lose your identity. People go into grief. They they go into mourning. You know, they grieve their older. They think, oh, I can't wait to retire. But the truth of it is they, they lose that identity and they start to grieve that. And it's a process that it's hard to explain to anyone who hasn't gone through it. But it, but it really is a very human element. I wonder how much of it is. Okay, you're, you know, in the last thing we talked about stepping out on your own as an entrepreneur, but when you are retiring, you're in a way stepping out on your own. You, you need to figure out the next step in your plan, whatever that may be. But how much of it is, you know, we're not going to have employee benefits per se. We're going to transition to Medicare, Medicaid, and some, you know, uh, Social Security. Um, you know, what are healthcare expenses going to be? There's a lot of unknowns there. And I wonder if that is part of that emotional, emotional burden. For people. Well, there's, cer there's certainly an insecurity there about what this next chapter is going to look like and, and, you know, how that, you know, is relevant because, you know, when you're actually earning money, there's a certain sense of satisfaction that comes from that and a certain degree of, um, of it resonates with who you are and your identity. But I, I really think the point of the, the piece I wrote in the New York Times is really looking at this emotional shift because it's very lonely and people often like kick off in retirement going, oh, fantastic, I'm going to travel, I'm going to spend time with the grandkids, I'm going to tinker in the garage, whatever it is. And that's wonderful maybe initially, but sort of that high wears off. And they forget, they realize how much they enjoyed those relationships they had at work and um, that network of people they had around them. So you need to find ways to shift and replace it. And then once they do that, they launch, you can launch into a truly happy period of your life where you really can focus on doing some of these things that, that you couldn't do before. And so um, there's really some basic steps about doing that soul searching. And, and starting to build out a basket of activities. And you should really try to do that before you retire and get some of those things in place so it's not such a big shift. 
Yeah, I, I think uh, you know we have a great technological society. All of us now carry, most of us carry cell phones, uh, iPhones or Samsung phones, whatever. Uh, but I, I feel like in some ways it's very isolating technology, uh, it, although it does allow us to communicate, but it, you know we're doing it behind a screen. And I, I feel like you know we are social creatures. We need to get out. We need to talk to people. Um, and there are, are organizations today, not-for-profits, that will assist seniors or people transitioning into retirement to kind of figure out what they like, uh, what they don't like, and also help them find opportunities in the workforce. Oh, and and there's wonderful, I mean, retirement coaches uh, out there who, you know, you don't have to spend a lot to ha hire a retirement coach to kind of help you work through some of these issues of, of what is it that you love to do when you were younger? What were some of your passions that you might want to reconnect with? Or you know, do you really, do you have a dog and you like to dog walk? Well, let's think, can we find a meetup group around you that you can get a group of people where you walk dogs together or, you know, you ride bikes together or you walk together. Start putting these things in place. But a retirement coach can actually guide you a little bit in your thinking about what are some of these things that I'm going to do that inner soul search about, you know, who are some of the people I want to surround myself with and what kind of person do I want to be at this stage in my life? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Carrie, I got to tell you, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I'm so excited for your book. I'm so excited to continue to read your articles and, and would look forward to having you back again on the network in the future. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much. Love being with you. Thank you. Take care. And that wraps this episode of BRN AM. Have a financial topic or someone of interest that we should interview? Drop us a line. And don't forget, check out more news and headlines in today's edition of The Morning Pulse. So until tomorrow, keep on saving and don't forget, roll with the changes.